We have two big solar storms on their way to Earth, plus X-Flare players give us some holiday fireworks, and it's all in time for New Year's. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Our sun continues the holiday fireworks this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we have been watching this cluster of regions over the past week as it's been giving us big M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout. But this week we have region 3936, 3938, and region 3939 joining the fray. These regions have been firing off big solar flares and solar storms. In fact, back on the on the 28th, we started really seeing some activity from region 3939 or 8, and then 39 gets in the fray and you can watch them both kind of launching some junk here. Well, at one point they launched this big solar storm. Check this out in coronagraphs. See this massive halo? This is definitely an Earth-directed solar storm and we'll talk more about it in a minute because this one could actually hit Earth by New Year's. So we'll talk about that in a sec when we get into the models. But that's the first of several solar storms that are going to hit Earth. You can watch these regions continue to fire over the next 24 hours and on the eve of the 29th region 3939 fires again here's another partial halo it's much more wispy than the first one and that's because this thing keeps firing off all of its material but this is also an earth directed solar storm so it's now going to be on the heels of the first one and this could hit on new year's day so welcome to january 1st in the new year now on top of that we had to have more activity from these regions watch region 3932 and 3936 here early on the 30th. Pow! Both of them fire together and give us an X-class flare. This is an R3 level radio blackout over the Asian Pacific. Now we didn't get a big solar storm launch with this, so we don't have yet another Earth-directed solar storm, but with all of this activity on the Earth-facing disk and new regions going to be rotating into Earth view, you can see region 3943 here firing off some junk here off to the side. That particular region might be old region 39 917, which was very active last rotation. So my goodness, the storm potential and the flare potential keeps coming. So get ready, Aurora photographers, because you're going to have a lot of fun over New Year's and possibly in through next week as well. And now taking a closer look at those solar storms that are on their way to Earth, we switch to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as we begin to set this solar storm model in motion, you can see both solar storms. There's the first one being launched. There's the second one being launched. As you can see, they're both headed toward Earth, with the first one being much larger than the second. The first one looks like it's going to hit Earth about uh, 1700 uh, UTC on the the New Year's Eve. So this could be a really beautiful uh, impact right for New Year's Eve. We have almost a new moon, and this could mean Aurora photographers could get a gorgeous show. Plus, after that, if we take a look at the intensity here, you can see just shortly thereafter, we get the impact from the second one, and that one will be about 600 UTC on the on New Year's Day. So this is what Noah believes will, will be the impact. You've got a nice little window there. So let's hope that that's the case. If we switch to our next NASA's uh, version of the model, again, you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. As I set this solar storm model in motion, you can see these two solar storms being launched. The first one looks like it's going to hit Earth right here uh, about noon on the 31st, so that's a little bit sooner than what, Na or what NOAA believes is going to be the, the case. But the second solar storm 
if it if it I can get it to move forward here just a little bit. Let's see. Move forward for me. There you go. That solar storm looks like it could hit oh really about midnight. So es essentially as the clock strikes 12. So Aurora photographers either way whether it's going to be kind of earlier on uh New Year's Eve through the New Year's Day, it the window is pretty well set that we're going to have some decent chance for Aurora here over New Year's Eve and New Year's Day before things calm down. And again, we could have a bigger chance for more solar storms later in the week because we do have new active regions rotating into Earth view. Now, switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon, with the new moon being on the 31st, and by the 5th, the moon will still be about 45% illuminated. So, you night sky watchers, if you want to catch some dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora, well, now is your perfect chance. Now, switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from those two solar storms that are on their way to Earth. We expect the first to hit on New Year's Eve, so at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting severe storm conditions. In fact, we could see G3 levels. We have about an 85% chance of that severe storm at high latitudes over the 31st, and then major storm levels on the 30 on the 1st, so New Year's Day. So we'll still be storming, but probably at the G1 to G2 level and then things will begin to settle down after that but aurora photographers remember we do still have a lot of chances for solar storms with a lot of active regions that are very uh, storm producing right now so don't expect that the end of this uh, at the end of this week that this forecast is going to be worth anything it probably won't be unsettled we'll probably have more stuff coming at us now at mid latitudes well we're only expecting major storm conditions over new year's eve that's about the g2 level in fact we're expecting about about a 50% chance of maybe a G2 to G3 level. We'll see about that. Things should settle down to at least minor storm conditions by New Year's Day, but again, still a lot of aurora for you aurora photographers. And with that new moon, the aurora should be very bright. Then again, we're going to be calming down, but again, keep your fingers crossed because we could see more solar storms being launched easily over this week. And now switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week. We are sitting well into the 200s for solar flux this week. This is because we have so many active regions in Earth view who that are big flare players. In fact, we've got severe noise on the dayside radio bands and that's easily going to continue over the next few days, possibly through the rest of the week before things settle down. Hopefully things will settle down just a little bit as a few of these regions rotate to the sun's far side. We're giving about an 80% chance of M-class flares. This is at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout. And about a 30% chance of X-class flares. This is at the R3 level radio blackout, likely because we keep getting these flare pairs where multiple regions keep flaring at the same time, and that really boosts that radio blackout level. And that's going to continue easily again through the next few days, possibly for the rest of the week. It's going to depend upon what we have on the sun's far side that's rotating back into Earth view. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, expect this week to be a bit tough. We've got those big solar storms on the night side plus big radio, radio blackout potential on the day side. So hunker down and grin and bear it over this next week because things, I promise, will get better. And now switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, we are sitting with elevated fluxes right now. In fact, we're sitting at the D2 minor range for you aviators. This is at flight level 360. It's still below the S1 official radiation storm level, however, for everybody else. And this is because we've just been dealing with the waning bit of this radiation storm that we got last week. My goodness, it's taking a long time to settle down. But that's also because we have so many big flare players in Earth view firing more solar storms, and it just keeps that particle environment really energized. So we're going to expect to see these levels easily over in through New Year's Day before things really settle down. NOAA's giving us about a 20% chance of an S1 to S2 level radiation storm over the next couple days. That risk should settle down here over the next few days, and once we get into the weekend, hopefully things will be back into the quiet range. So you aviators, and this does include flight crew and high-risk passengers, just keep in mind that you do have slightly elevated fluxes right now. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, but be sure to watch those ICAO advisories and take these into consideration in your flight plans. 
So the space weather this week is ringing in the New Year's along with the rest of us. We have two Earth-directed solar storms. Well, the first is going to hit on New Year's Eve and the second on New Year's Day. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely get a gorgeous show. We could hit G3 levels and with that new moon, the sky should be incredibly dark, which is really great news for you. Now, Aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, you know what? The news is pretty good for you too because with a G3 level storm, that means Aurora will dip deep down into mid-latitudes and it could be very bright as long as the magnetic field is in the right orientation and make it conducive to storming. So be sure to check those online space weather communities because I guarantee you field reporters are going to be reporting in and they'll keep you up to date. Now amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well sadly we do have a lot of flaring right now and a lot of noise on the bands on the dayside radio bands and this is because we have lots of those big flare players in earth view and this this is going to continue easily over the next week, so expect R2 to R3 level radio blackouts to be the norm. So don't be checking your rig. Everything is okay. It's just the space weather. And now you GPS users, well, sad news for you as well. We have a lot of noise on the day side radio bands, uh, but also we're going to have a lot of noise on the night side as well because of the big solar storms hitting. So you GPS users, and this does include you pre precision agriculture farmers, be very careful expect to get some issues with GPS uh, signal degradation over the next few days. And if you're a drone flyer, be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often during the solar storms. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.